Okay, so now we're going to look at the distributive law. Okay, so this is where you take uh, a couple of terms in brackets, okay, so added or subtracted or whatever, and you have to multiply uh, that sum, or if it's a difference, by A. Well, what this means is that you can multiply A by each term in there. So A times B, A times C. And we're going to see why this works here. So we know that 2 times x, or 2x, is the same as x plus x. Okay? Two groups of x. So if I change that x to something else, like a plus b or x plus y, then two groups of x plus y is x plus y plus x plus y. That's what two times means. Okay. Now we use tool 9, which was the adding of polynomials. And when we add them, we just take away the brackets. And we can reorder them. Okay, so you take away the brackets and you collect like terms. Put the x's here, the y's there. Okay, x's, x plus x turns into 2x, y plus y turns into 2y. That's collecting like terms, that tool. Okay, so 2x plus y is 2x and 2y plus 2y. Okay, if we look at it in terms of the a times b plus c, well, a times b plus c is going to be a groups of b plus c. So I'm going to write b plus c a times, okay, with brackets. And when we're adding polynomials, you just remove the brackets and collect them, okay? So you ignore those brackets. Collect all the b's to the front, all the c's to the back, and you got a b's and a c's. So you got a times b times plus a times c. Okay, so that's why that works. That's why that distributive law works. So what you're doing is you're distributing a in to each term. Okay, and multiplying it. Okay, so some uh, examples on this. Example 1, 2 times 3x minus 5. What are we going to do here? We're going to multiply. Okay, we're going to multiply the 2 times the 3x and the 2 times the 5 and subtract. Okay, so 2 times 3x, 2 times 5. You distribute it in. keep that minus sign in there. And that gives you 2 times 3x is 6x, 2 times 5 is 10, so 6x minus 10. Okay. Um, and you can, well, it's just another way of looking at it, so you can jump right from here, 2 times 3x is 2 times 3 times x. Okay, so that's basically what it is there. Uh, the next one, 2x, so the outside term is not uh, just a constant, okay? It's a term, so 2x times x squared minus 2x. Well, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to multiply the 2x times x squared and 2x times 2x. So we've got 2x times x squared minus 2x times 2x. Well, the x times x squared gives you x cubed. The x times x gives you x squared, and the 2 times 2 gives you 4. Okay, so if you want to break this down further, you can break it down into a full multiplication statement here. So 2x is 2 times x. x squared is x times x. So all that multiplied. And then 2 times x times 2 times x. You can reorder the 2's here. Put the 2's at the front, x is at the back. Okay just like this. And then you've got 2x cubed minus 4x squared. All right. Next example. Here, so 2x squared minus x, or times x minus 3y. Okay, you can distribute that in again. So you got 2x squared times x minus 2x squared times 3xy. And you multiply that out. x squared times x is x cubed. 2 stays there, 
2 times 3 is 6, x squared times x is x cubed, and there's only a single y. Okay. And this one over here, number 3, oh, excuse me, number 3, that's number 4. Okay. Uh, x squared y uh, times 2y plus 5xy squared. Okay, multiply this whole thing in. It gets a little bit more complicated, but the same idea. So 3x squared y times 2y plus 3x squared y times 5x squared y squared. Okay, so the first part should be the same. 3 times 2, 6. x squared, there's only one x squared in there, leave it alone. y times y is y squared. 3 times 5, 15, a plus in there x squared times x, x cubed, y times y squared is y cubed. You add the exponents, okay? So that's that one. Now this next one is just backwards of the um, previous tool, okay? So now we can look at uh, reversing that process. It's called factoring out a common factor. So if you had something that looked like this, a times b plus a times c, then you know you can go a times b plus c in brackets. That's just the reverse of the distributive law. So if the distributive law works going this way, then it, because there's an equal sign there, it means it works the other way. Okay, so common is a, you can factor it out in front. Okay, so factoring means writing something as a product of its factors. Uh, numbers that multiply to give you that answer. Okay, so a times b plus a times c, you can factor out the a. Okay, so this is the reverse of tool 10, 2x plus 2y, that's this form here, where 2 is the a, it's common, equals x plus x plus y plus y, going in the reverse process, now putting the x's and the y's together, so x plus y, plus x plus y, and we have two groups of x plus y, so we can write it like this. Okay, Same thing if we use the unknown a. Okay, So a times b plus a times c, that's a b's and a c's. Regroup them, so for every b you put a c with it, and you should have a of them. Now you can just write a times b plus c because you have a groups of b plus c. Okay, so that's a bit of a proof for that. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples here. So example one, 6x minus 10. What's common in that? Well, it doesn't look like there's anything common right away. But if you think about it, 2 is a factor of both 6 and 10. So we can write this in the form that we were looking at earlier. So in the form of um, that right there. So AB plus AC. Okay. So now that we've got this out in front, this 2, we can take it out and write down what's left over. So 2 times 3x minus 5 is the factored form. Okay. Example 2. In this one, we see that 2 is also is a common factor again. It's a factor of 2 and it's a factor of 4. But also x is a factor. Okay, So I can divide out an x in both of these. So the lowest power of x makes that the factor. Since this is x to the, x to the 3, x to the 3 is not a factor, but this is x to the 1. So x to the 1 is lower, so that's going to be a factor. We're going to see how this works. Okay, So 2x times x squared x times x squared gives me x cubed. 2 gives you the 2x cubed, so it gets it back. Okay. And I've done this wrong, so this should be 2x times 2 here. Okay. So that's 2x times 2. 
right, because 2 is a factor of 4 and x is a factor of x. So now I have 2x as the common factor of both pieces. Okay, 2 times 2 is 4 times x is 4x. So I have to correct this next one here. That should be a 2. Okay, So 2x is written out in front, and what you have left over here is x squared minus 2. Next one. 2x cubed minus 6x squared. Why? 2 is a common factor. x squared is a common factor because that's the lowest power of, of x. And x is common in the 2. So I'm going to write that out in front, x squared. There's no common factor of y here because y is not written in both of them. Okay. So 2x squared, 2 is a common factor, x squared is a common factor, times what gives me 2x cubed? Well, because there's only, I'm only missing 1, it's just x. So x squared times x is x cubed. Minus 2x squared, okay, so 2 times what gives me 6? Well, that's a 3. x squared times what gives me x squared? Well, that's a 1. I don't have to write that in there. And then I need to get a y in there, so I need to put that down, so that's what's left over. Okay, and now you can write it with a 2x squared outside. x minus 3y is in the inside. Okay, next one. They're getting more complicated as we go. So 6x squared y squared plus 15x cubed y. Common factor here is not 6 or 15, but 3. Okay, 3 divides into 6 twice, 3 divides into 15 five times x squared is also going to be a common factor because it's the lowest power of x in these two terms and it's in both of them. y is now in both terms. y to the 1 is the lowest one. So we're going to have 3 x squared, it's the lowest, y as the common factor. 3 x squared y. So what is the, what's left over to get this piece then? So 3, I'm going to have to multiply by 2 to get 6 x squared, I don't need that in there. And then y times what is y squared? Well, another y. Plus 3x squared here, y. Um, what do I multiply 3 by to get 15? I need a 5 there. What do I mul multiply x squared by to get x cubed? I need an x. And the y is, stays the same, so I don't have to put it in there. Now I can factor out the 3x squared y from both. And what I have left is what's in here. Okay. Now, 5x squared minus 30x plus 20. Well, now we have more than two terms. Can we do the same thing? Well, we sure can. Okay, so we can look for the common factor in all three. Well, in this one, x is only in two of the terms, so it's not going to be part of the common factor. So 5, 30, and 20 has 5 as a common factor. 5 is what we're going to write outside of each one of those terms. So x squared is what's left over here. 6x, 5 times 6 is 30, so 6x is what's left here. And 5 times 4 is 20, so 4 is what's left over here. So we can factor out the 5 now, and we've got 5x squared minus 6x plus 4. So you can have more than one thing in, this, in these brackets. Okay, and here's the next one, 15x cubed minus 3x plus 12x squared y. Now we have 3 is a common factor of 3, 12, and 15, and x is a common factor of x, x squared, and x cubed. There is no common factor with y. So we've got 3x outside, 5x squared, 3 times 5 is 15, x times x squared is x cubed. 3x is exactly this term here, so I have to write a 1, a minus 1. 3x times 1 is 3x. You can't leave that blank. Okay. And then 3 times 4 is 12. x times x is x squared. And then I need a y in there. Okay, And that's how that factors out. And that's it for that one.